inclusive education. Um, they are from uh, organizations, they are from universities, they are policies, very, very successful policies, and I can't wait, and I suppose you as well can't wait to hear about them. So let's start immediately um, with Reach and Match Inclusive Education Program that comes from Australia, such a long uh, journey. Mandy Lau uh, is an award-winning designer committed to fostering positive change through her innovative creations. She specializes, spe uh, this happens as well, specializes in indus industrial design, research, and special education. Her dedication to inclusive education for children with disabilities led her to create Reach and Match, a pioneering educational tool that promotes inclusion. The tool Mandy created currently aids tens of thousands of students with vision impairment and mul multiple disabilities in inclusive um, educational settings. Welcome, and the floor is yours. You can present from here or you can stand as you wish. Oh, thanks, everyone. Hi, everyone. My name is Mandy, founder of Rich and Match, based in Melbourne, Australia. It only took me 25 hours to be here. So I'm a young Asian woman with short hair and glasses and wearing a uh, black dress. Um, today, I'm so excited to be here and share our inclusive education solution with you all. So we all know that children with disabilities often face social exclusion and struggle to reach developmental milestones. For example, in Australia, despite 89% of these children attend mainstream schools, only 70% 70, 70 feel isolated and left out of the school activities. But this is not just an Australian issue, it's a global challenge. With my background in product design and engineering, and I'm deeply passionate about inclusion and education, I was wondering what true inclusion looked like. And inclusion can be such a complex topic for adults, and how do we teach that to children? And it led me to start my research and address the global need for effective solutions to support children with special needs in mainstream schools. So I collaborate with the early intervention specialists and educators to develop reach and match. So this program is decided to tackle these challenges by translating inclusion into fun, interactive play, in breakdowns barriers, making inclusion tangible and enjoyable for all children. And this program has four main components. The first one is, is a double size sensory kit with the braille features. So children with and without vision impairment, they can play together. So this is part of the house I want to show you with the braille on the top, but also the letter. So children, they can all play together. And one side, the children can learn about matching color, shapes and sound. And when you flip over, you can make a path and children can develop motor skills, direction and spatial concepts. And second, I work with educators to develop a program that contains 40 activities focusing on physical, cognitive, language, and social emotional skills that align with the global early learning standards. So, ye so the teachers can easily adapt into their curriculum. And we also provide training for educators so they can learn about the inclusive pedagogical techniques. And lastly, we also work with some organizations develop monitoring and evaluation tools to monitor the effectiveness of the program to make sure that um, the impact on the children and um, teachers can be maximized. So for Rich and Match, um, unique value is provide an innovative approach to education, intervention and inclusion. Uh, first of all, it's inclusive and multisensory. It's fun for all children. We invite everyone to come. And they can learn and collaborate um, uh, through play. And also because of tactile, auditory and visual activities that promote social inclusion. And this is evidence-based and also adaptable, supported by rigorous research decided to meet the global learning standards. And it is also adaptable to diverse cultural contexts and ensure everyone can access. Lastly, our program is dedicated to empower educators and therapists 
So we provide their training materials and reach their teaching methods and fostering the essential cognitive motor social skills in children. So since 2014, Reach and Match has impacted over 35,000 children in eight countries. Um, and we've been using in many settings, kindergarten, schools, families, early intervention service. And we've seen improvement in participation, learning outcomes, and emotional well beings among children with disabilities. And we're also able to improve teachers' abilities in inclusive teaching practice, because which is really important in our program. And Rich and Match has been globally recognized. We received numerous awards in education, inclusion, and design. We also form successful partnership with children relief organizations such as UNICEF and World Vision that bring our program to developing countries and emergencies. For example, we partner with Save the Children to support over 2,400 children affected in the Mavari Sage in Philippines in 2018. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, we collaborate with UNICEF and Child Fund to enhance the inclusive teaching in Papua New Guinea. And in Thailand, we work with the World Vision and improve the educational access and engagement in rural and tribal communities. So in our journey with Reach and Match, we have witnessed transformative stories. For example, Simon is an eight years old boy with cerebral palsy and intellectual disabilities. He's part of our Save the Children School Readiness Project. We Reach and Match, he made re remarkable progress. Despite his challenge, he developed skills in color recognition, counting, fine motor skills, and also reached a milestone that in his development by playing independently. And another inspiring story comes from our partner with American Printing House for the Blind. Barbara Peterson is an APH scholar and vision consultant, has been firsthand uh, witnessed how Rich and Match benefits children in various therapists. So her team used this in different settings in early learning, orientation, mobility, physical and occupational therapists. And she shared that uh, the program's flexibility and innovations and highlights how it supports holistic development in children and meets their educational and therapeutic goals. So as we look forward and to the future, our vision for Reach and Mesh to ex is to expand its influence globally and further enhance the impact in our education system. And we also commit to have ongoing product development, focusing on creating inclusive, accessible and scalable resources that align with the sustainable development goals for quality education. And we're also developing a family version, uh, the learning kit. And we acknowledge the complexities involved in distribution resources need in the production. And there are some steps we, we are learning and navigate as we grow. And we're actively forming new partnerships with educational institutions, governments, and international um, NGOs to promote inclusive education and reach to more children. Finally, to reflect on this learning journey, I realized that inclusion does not need to be complex. It can be fun, engaging, and authentic for everyone. And if you are inspired by our vision, I would love to invite you to collaborate with us to make a difference in the lives of children globally. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Mandy. It's actually a very joyful program. <laughs> and we all know that we better learn through play, right? So, um, and I'm very impressed by uh, the power that you have given to the program through the very important collaborations with key players uh, <laughs> uh, in the international arena. Um, I believe we will have questions to Mandy at the end of the session and you kept note of those questions. Now we go to Israel, uh, to the MISCCR model which stands for Mediational Intervention for Sensitizing Caregivers to Promote Self-Regulation. This is an evidence-based intervention model for guiding parents and caregivers in promoting optimal inclusion of toddlers with disabilities. Um, to tell us everything about uh, this award-winning um, model, 
It's with us Dr. Nurit Yagerman is the head of the Harris Clinical Developmental Unit at the Faculty of Education of Bar Ilan University in Israel. And the program was developed and its effectiveness was research proven as part of Dr. Nurit's doctoral thesis. The Harris Clinical Developmental Unit that Dr. Yagerman founded and uh, manages consists of healthcare professionals that specialize in the model, implementation, teaching, and training. Together with Dr. Nurit is also Ms. Neta Aharoni, which is an occupational therapist and head of occupational therapy in the toddler and preschool programs in Israel Elvin which is Northern Israel and Jerusalem. Neta initiated the implementation of the model in the organization. She also leads the training of the multidisciplinary staff of the model in collaboration with staff from the Harris program at Bar Ilan University. Neta is the parent counselor and promoter of expanding the implementation of the model nationwide in Israel. Thank you very much, welcome. Uh, I need to remind myself and everybody that while we need to keep time, we also need to speak slowly uh, yeah. to respect the work of sign language interpreters. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm so um, excited to be here and to meet everyone. And this is such an expiring uh, event. Uh, I want to start with one sentence, personal sentence. If I could rewrite the title of our presentation, it will be, it's all about relations. It is all about relations, and uh, I will start with our partners. I will start with, with presenting our partners and us. So Israel Elvin provides innovative programs for more than 5,400 children and adults with disabilities daily, including operation of 20 daycare centers for toddlers. And this is the place that we are coming in, the Harris program. In relationship, in partnership, a warm and close partnership with the Harris program at Bar Ilan University, Israel Elvin implemented and still are implementing an evidence-based early intervention program that was uh, developed at the Bar Ilan University. The MISC ah, <laughs> the MISC SR focuses on enhancing the quality of day-to-day parent-child interaction, which is relationship in another word, with toddlers with disabilities. So, uh, yeah, the MISCUS R model, I will talk a little bit, a little bit clinical material. So the intervention model was developed at the bar Ilan University and it focuses on child-parent self-regulation, fostering fostering mutual regulation and quality parent-child interaction. I just want to use this opportunity to say thank you to my friend and colleague, Ayelet David, and uh, she is uh, leading this partnership nowadays. As an initial part and a unique component of the MISC-SR intervention, child sensory and regulatory individual profile is being professionally assessed and explained to the parents. This is the basic of the intervention. This parental awareness supports their ability to adapt their behavior in a way that enhances toddler's participation, interest, and joy in day-to-day -day interaction. And this is a necessary condition for better developmental outcome. During the, the, during the intervention, videotaped parent-child play sessions are analyzed together with the parents, and we identify together parental behavior that meets toddlers' individual sensory and regulatory needs and enhance overall development of the toddler. And there is a very important and basic part of the well-being of the parent. The emphasis of the intervention is pointing out sensitive and appropriate parental behaviors that occurs naturally in the interaction. In this way, we promote the parental self-confidence and sense of competence. Okay. 
I will uh, uh, introduce Aviad and his mother. Aviad here is two years and two months old toddler, design, di diagnosed on the autistic spectrum. We will see two short clips, pre and post intervention, MISCES R intervention, about three months between them. Aviad parents have difficulties to get him to cooperate with them and describe frustration and even despair from the many unsuccessful attempts to create reciprocal communication with him. In the evaluation of his sensory and regulatory profile, it emerged that he has low sensory registration, which is quite common with young children with autism. That means that he has dif is, it is difficult for him to receive accurate sensory information from his body and from the environment, and therefore react in a regulated and adapted manner. Mm -hmm. For example, to play with his mother, to play with his mother and not beside her, as we will see on the first clip. During the intervention, Aviat's profile was explained to the parents, and together with them, we identified their behaviors that help him to organize his arousal, social attention, and goal-directed behavior. In post-intervention clip, please pay attention to mother's synchronized behavior with Aviad and her use of clear, affective cues. Let's see Aviad. No, no. Aya. Ah, yeah. okay. Should be. Ah, can, can we see the clip? Yes, yes. Great. No voice. Can we try again with the voice? So I will try to speak with it. You can see at the pre-intervention clip that mother tried to play with Aviad, but Aviad is very, we call it object-oriented instead of human-oriented. We can, we can show the clips. Okay. So he's playing with the car and his mother is trying. She says, give me the car. She says, let's play together. She says, it's not fair. You're not giving me the car. She's trying something else because it doesn't work with the car. This is something that we see a lot of in, uh, in the dyads of uh, autistic young, young children. And now we can see Aviad uh after intervention post intervention with his mother they play to he's starting with the with this car but he's talking to mother and she's talking to her she says he says mother mommy and she said then you are aviad mm. and they hug each other that sounds sweet mm -hmm. and uh, this uh of course stands for a social emotional development of aviad so Neta will continue. Thank you. So the COVID-19 period was a timely opportunity to be introduced to the MISCAS R model as it's based on parental guidance through video and it is suitable for direct remote therapy treatment. It was during this time that we participated in a training course on the MISCAS R model by the Bar Ilan staff. During this professional training and the experience that we gained while working with it, we realized that it is a very suitable model for the toddlers with disabilities who are 
included in our programs. Israel Ervin is the first early intervention provider in, in Israel to support parent-toddler interaction using this model. The MISCAS R model gives parents a customized practical simple tools to promote their individual child's development. The fact that intervention can be applied remotely help us to expand our services to the families. We know that in early intervention work, it's a big challenge to create a common language between the educational and therapeutic staff and the parents. We are pleased to be leaders in the, in the development of a common language that focuses on high quality interaction. For example, match and stretch is a common expression that people interacting with a young child understand, as it highlights the importance of relating to the child on her or his level, and then expanding this a bit so that the child may learn something new. Uh, through the program, no. Through the program, we train Israel Ervin's multidisciplinary ex experts nationwide who use the model with parents and educational therapeut and therapeutic staff. The model promotes the development of toddlers with disabilities, and we see the positive impact on their quality of life and their opportunities for inclusion in society. We believe that the success of this intervention is providing our staff with a boost of motivation um, to continue with the important daily work. Uh, this is the feedback we received from one of the first families who motivated us to continue with the model and to expand the program. Uh, the therapy combines feeling feeling a video of the parents playing with an eye, viewing the video and assessing what took place, while also providing insights regarding your nice needs and the relevant behavior and interventions that we as parents need to provide to achieve developmental progress. Through this work, we have seen your nice progress in all areas, cognitive, language, behavioral, and emotional. Our primary challenge is to introduce a new way of working in the organization that both the staff and parents are not familiar with, and this adjustment takes time. Another challenge is that the staff must utilize specific skills that are provided in the MISCASAR model, such as cultural sensitivity, when working with parents from diverse groups in society. A final challenge is succeeding in getting funding for the extra services we have added to our early intervention programs and to, tra to train more professionals to use this model. Our next steps to expand the project to more of Israel's Elvin's early intervention centers and preschool nationwide, to use the model principles in Israel Elvin's other programs for all age groups, and to scale up the model so that it can be replicated in other organizations, bringing about a change in education system in Israel as well as internationally. Thank you. Thank you very much to both of you. Yeah, it's very common to hear that while we want to scale up, we lack funding as well. <laughs> This is this is what I notice every year and what I experience myself as well. So now we go to Portugal. The clicker, please. Yeah. Um, to what I know, Portugal is the best country for inclusion. <laughs> so our expectations here are high. And of course, this time we are talking about a policy, because at the end of the day, if we want sustainability, we need to get on board governments and lucky them who achieve that. And it seems um, that a good friend of mine, Miguel Valles, <laughs> uh, who is the president of the board and secretary general of Mira Sintra Cooperative for Inclusion, medium-sized nonprofit organization for persons with disabilities, um, 
achieve this so. Miguel is also a member of the board of the European Association of Service Providers for Persons with Disabilities. Uh, and yeah, he comes from Portugal and he will tell us how their national system on early, of early intervention promotes case manager model as a sustainable way to improve the access to families to early childhood intervention support systems. Miguel, you have eight minutes. I know you can make it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Emanuela, for your kind presentation. Thank you so much for the invitation by uh, Assel Foundation and the uh, Zero Project. I am Miguel. I'm a 48-year-old man. I have gray hair. Uh, I wear glasses medium stature, slightly overweight. Uh, <laughs> I have a green sweater and uh, gray pants. Um, so uh, CSED is, uh, is a non-profit organization, a private non-profit um, NGO, and we provide services for persons with disabilities from all ages and all activities and all, all areas of life. Um, but I come here specifically talking about our participation in the national system of early intervention that Portugal uh, built uh, by gathering forces. So um, it started. It all started with the signature by Portugal, by the for the UN Convention. Sorry, I forgot the yeah. quick. Uh, so the start was Portugal signed the UN Declaration uh, and the UN Convention. Sorry. Uh, and with, with that signature, it also signed the optional protocol. So the optional protocol puts Portugal on, on, on a direct relationship to the committee of, uh, of the UN, and the committee receives uh, complaints of, of, of uh, citizens when Portugal doesn't comply with the UN convention. So for Portugal, it was, it was seen the signature as something that is not optional. It's mandatory. We have to follow the UN conventions and all its articles. So when it signed, when it, it signed the, 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 the convention, unfortunately, we were under a severe economic crisis. So we have this problem how to deal with increased uh, uh, budget to to greatly support uh, nationwide all children that needed support and following the guidelines of the UN Convention and respecting the really tight budget that we had. So the process started with ac academic papers and studies, mainly from the US, that uh, has a model of intervention that uh, uh, is, is, we call it a third generation support. Um, so, uh, by the identification of champions of each ministry that usually had teams providing service for early childhood intervention, we found out those champions at, at the ministry level and it was decided to join forces. So, independently for each ministry, it would be impossible to, to have a nationwide uh, service for all children and it was only possible by gathering forces. So we started this process of gathering ministries, gathering extremely uh, uh, with high quality teams that already had the service and put them working together. So uh, uh, this, the, the aim was to to, to have this more efficient uh, service, efficient way of, of, of full coverage of all children that uh, needed support. Why? Because early intervention does not cope with waiting lists. So if we want early intervention, you cannot say to a family, in six months, I will provide the service. So these were the, 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 the guidelines that we, that we, we started with. So, cost-effective, a uh, full coverage national system, and free for all users. These were the, thank you, Manuela, for your support. Uh, these were the, 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 what we want, really wanted to build at national level. Uh, a team that represents all ministries and, and a way to consolidate all the information, because we had wonderful information in health teams. We had wonderful information and data from education teams, but 
they were their information. It was not shared between all stakeholders in the process on, we were talking about intervention with, with children. Um, and a system that enables parents' decision. So it is their plan. Me as a health professional, I'm an expert on diagnosis. I'm an expert on, on using technical tools and uh, so, some, some uh, technical aspects. Families are the experts on their child. So when we are talking to a family, we're talking an expert to an expert. We are not, uh, we are not in different levels. So it started from, from, from this point. Um, the main objectives, the main goals, were to increase the learning opportunities of the child, to strengthen caregivers' competencies. Why? Because sometimes it may happen for that family to have another child with a disability. And to have another child, those competencies are not are belonging now to the family. So they require different support. Um, and to promote family participation and the engagement of uh, on community resources. So how to easily access the services that I need. Because previously what we had was families fully engage and with, with many resources that could go to different ministries and, and bring to themselves and to their child all the resources needed. We know families defend their child and for them, more support is better. You know, if I have one hour therapy, two hours, it will be better. If I have two hours, four hours therapy, it will be better. So for the family perspective, the more, the better. However, on the other hand, you would have families with less resources, less opportunities that got nothing because they didn't know how to get, how to overcome those bureaucratic hurdles that we have to 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 go to the to the obstacles that ministries uh, have, you know. So these were very simple objectives that that um, that we had, and so the national system started to be built. This was. A national level, so joint resources by three different ministries, um, and where they share their budgets, where they share their human resources, uh, the information that the database management is. This is really important. So ministries shared all the information, and for the professionals working on ECI, sorry, uh, early childhood intervention, they would get all the information from health sector from the education, from social affairs, or for uh, um, even on, on these uh, technical tools. So it will be a, a, a one-stop shop for families and the person that interacts with the family has the full inf data access when they're uh, having the, this, this, uh, these interactions. And of course, we are just one of many, many uh, organizations that participate in the, this national system. But when we entered the national system, we also shared our partnerships. So our relationship that we grew uh, along the years, so we also bring those partnerships to the national system. I think it, it, will, it was a win-win situations for all. Um, so the current system now is that we only have one national coordination it's three persons on a national system, so each person representing each ministry. We have five regional subcommissions, so Portugal do not have uh, autonomous regions in the national territory. So these are ways to divide the, 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 the national system. And currently we have 155 local teams, ranging one team for, we usually have 20 professionals for, for each team, so it's quite a large number, uh, 1,600 professionals, ECI working national. We support around 27,000 children on, on this model and 80,000 persons are supported. So it's counting families and all, all the stakeholders involved. And of course, I'm overshooting my time. Uh, this is, a, this is a, a way to decide to, to, for you to see the importance of the transdisciplinary team. So if we want to have this, the role of the case manager, the case manager when interacting with the family, the case manager also represents 
their ministries. So uh, a case manager is something, is a, a ECI professional that interacts with the family and he represents the whole local team and has knowledge and, and can share for the family all, all the hurdles that, that we have. So it intends to be a, a one-stop shop for families and it's, it brings this process much easier. And since it's national uh, national uh, coverage, if a family moves from from one location inside Portugal to another, the plan is the same. So there's another lo local uh, team that receives the the family plan because the plan the intervention plan is the family's document. We are just uh, we just help the process. So this is our our uh, system, and just just to uh, just a quick uh, just the information that is on the website on, on our project is not really accurate. We are trying to to change the the the, the wording because it was it was collected in the wrong way. But we will uh, so do not base on the website uh, uh, for you for you to to get some information on the on the project. So thank you much. Thanks so much. So sorry for. Thank you very much, Miguel. I, I hope anyone in the room feels challenged enough to manage if they, if you still didn't manage to have like all oh, three ministries on board for any kind of services. <laughs> now we go back to Israel again. Uh, and we go to Cramble Wings, uh, where a youth movement has been placed, right? to support disabled individuals. The developed training for educational, so they develop training for educational teams in kindergartens, promoting inclusive discourse. Um, and to talk about this, I have here uh, Ms. Bet Bat Chen Gazella, am I right? And uh, sorry, you can <laughs> then introduce yourself. It's difficult to pronounce, but I'm very sorry about that. And Efrat Steinberger, this is like German surname, yeah. so uh, <laughs> I can make this. I live in Austria, I live in Vienna, and I am, I have some level of German. Um, they represent the Educational Social Knowledge Center of Cranbow Wings, an inclusive youth movement for children and youth uh, with and without disabilities. Uh, this model of inclusion and belonging was adapted to formal education system, starting from preschool age program, including activity sets, games and accessories that promote inclusion and belonging. Um, yeah, so they are here today to present and I see again that, that you have made to uh, put your program in the formal education system, like yeah. you have agreed with the minister as well. Amazing. Let's hear more about this. Thank you. So hi everyone, my name is Batren Gazala. And I am Efrat Steinberger. We are from Cranber Wings Knowledge Center in Israel, and we are here today to introduce to you Childhood with Crembo. Crembo Wings is a youth movement that brings together children with different abilities for an afternoon social educational activity that is both accessible and suited for the diverse abilities and needs for all our participants. The Social Educational Knowledge Center was established to extend our impact and connect with the broader audience beyond the youth movement. For example, educational staff in schools and early childhood programs, inclusion and diversity training for, in, for institute and companies. We live in a diverse world. We also live in a diverse country where our goal as organization is to create together a meaningful place for everyone as Jews, Arabs, Christians, religious and non-religious. In our exploration of research and learning within the Knowledge Center, we have observed that children introduced to diversity only after the age of 10 often holds fixed perspective, making it challenging for them to reshape their opinions on inclusion. Therefore, we reach a we reach a vital conclusion to enact real social change. Expanding inclusion education is crucial, starting as early as age three. Early exposure can prevent the need to later restructure the fixed pattern of prejudice in terminology and behavior. 
The program is designed to enhance the sense of belonging for both children with and without disabilities within a diversity yet socially inclusive group. To achieve this, we focus on a raising awareness about the needs and differences of every group member, while encouraging the use of terminology that emphasizes uniqueness rather than differentiation. The ultimate aim is to nurture a community where every child plays an active role. We envision that this group of children will serve a future model for the broader adult community, covering nuclear and extending family, circles of friends, neighbors, place of residence, and ultimately the entire society. It's essential to note that the main audience of Childhood with Crambo isn't individual with disabilities. We focus on educating kindergarten staff and children from mainstream education in order to change the status quo and foster a more inclusive society. So how do we achieve this? We provide a program activity kit to all participating classes, which includes a set of activities arranged to promote inclusive progress. The kit offers flexibility with activities adapted for various age groups, allowing teachers to customize based on their kindergarten structure and their personal preference. Teachers are encouraged to expand on these activities and contribute their own ideas to the collaborative pool of teachers and facilitators. We believe that in order to lead to actual change in their terminology and practice it in classes, it is important that the program be led by the teacher themselves and with the involvement of the entire educational staff, not by an external facilitator. This approach ensures that the program's content is seamlessly integrated into daily routine and reflected in the kindergarten, in the kindergarten schedule. To further support this process, each teacher is paired with a facilitator from Crambo Wings who provides professional guidance throughout the school year. These facilitators are expert in Crambo Wings inclusion model. Their role is to address specific difficulties and offer advice on building the educational environment, for example, accessibility and adaptations, contributing to the creation of an inclusive educational environment. Now that we understand a bit more about the practical side of the program, I would like to present to you some examples of the impact of childhood with Crambo. In one participating kindergarten, the teacher introduced dolls with disabilities to broaden the children's perceptions on diversity. Initially, a four-year-old girl expressed fear and avoided the dolls. However, within a few months, a remarkable change occurred. She provided a chair for a doll with a prosthetic leg at a group gathering, went out with the doll to the yard and built a ramp for her. At the end of the year, the girl's mother took her to a toy store and let her choose a gift. The girl chose a Barbie doll in a wheelchair. The mother shared the story on Facebook, crediting her daughter's choice entirely to the, to the program held in the kindergarten. After a whole year in which the program took place in a different kindergarten and the children awareness increased, the children raised an issue regarding a lack of accessible playgrounds facilities throughout the city. Taking initiative, they conducted research, obtained quotes, and scheduled meetings with the educational departments and the mayor's office. They presented them with the need and the optional solutions. Months later, in the new recreational area that was built, an accessible facility was installed for the benefit of the city's residents. At the end of the year, the kindergarten children met with Crambo Wings Youth Movement members with and without disabilities for meeting, focus on mutual acquaintance, learning, and collaborative activities. But like any journey, not everything goes smoothly. On, in, on the technical side, securing the budget can be challenging. On top of that, kindergarten teachers already engaged in additional mandatory professional development 
may not always have the time or openness to add another program, especially with large classes sizes ranging from 32 to 35 kids in Israel. Additionally, we face occasional resistance from parents and staff who hold biases against disabilities and inclusion. Some worry that their children won't receive sufficient attention due to the diverse challenges presented in a large group. Despite these challenges, we remain optimistic. We have evidence that while it's a process, attitudes toward inclusion are changing and will continue to do so in places where childhood with Crembo is implemented. Looking ahead, our vision is that childhood with Crembo will be an integral part of the academic training that new kindergarten teachers receive. We aspire to integrate it into the general early childhood curriculum. Our goal with the Childhood with Crembo is to support inclusion, reduce biases from parents and educators towards people with disabilities, and increase the inclusion of children with disabilities in mainstream early education. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Congratulations. And yes, of course, also us parents are a burden sometimes. Um, now we go to Chile, and um, this is a topic to my heart because my son was born with Down syndrome, and I was very, very much amazed to see how this kind of centers exist, actually. So we go um, to Ms. Macarena Lizama. She is Associate Professor in the Pediatrics Division of the Faculty of Medicine at the Pontificia Universitat Catolica de Chile, founder and executive director of Down Syndrome Center in Chile as well. Uh, she will talk about this Down Syndrome Interdisciplinary Center established by a numer numerous faculties of the university to improve the quality of life of people with Down syndrome by promoting knowledge in the training of expert professionals, providing tools and training to people with Down syndrome and their families to facilitate the maximum development of their capabilities and inclusion in our society with dignity and respect. Tell us how you made possible for such holistic center bringing together faculties as well. <laughs> Thank you very much Emmanuel, for this presentation. Um, for people uh, who can't see me, I'm a white woman with uh, black hair in the middle of 40s. Um, I'm using a red jacket. And today, uh, as Emmanuel says, uh, I will share you with you a program uh, from Down Syndrome Center from Universidad Católica de Chile. Uh, our center has had the mission of improving the quality of life for people with Down Syndrome to facilitate the best development of their capabilities and inclusion in our society with dignity and respect. The main pillars uh, of our center are research, professional training, and continuous stimulation for people with Down syndrome. So our objective is to increase the inclusion of people with Down syndrome. And one of the ways to achieve it is through the comprehensive integral development stimulation program that I will share with you today. The essence of our project uh, is a comprehensive early stimulation program for children with Down syndrome from birth to six years old, focusing on personal, cognitive, emotional, and interpersonal skills. We work in group sessions, each one with three children with similar age and developmental level. Each group receive multidisciplinary therapies with our six sessions per week with physical therapy, speech therapy, art, dance and musical therapy, occupational therapy, special education 
and psychology. Also, families participate during the therapy sessions, supported by a psychologist with a monthly psychoeducational session. Additionally, our educators take connection with every kindergarten where our children attend. Since at the, be the beginning of our center, uh, we have worked on early stimulation activities as workshop format. But after that, in 2017, we formalized it as a program with a group and multidisciplinary modality, working with 10 professionals who also receive students from related careers from our university. Actually, we have 16 groups with 48 participants. Also, we offer three monthly free webinars for families, siblings and grandparents, all of them open it to all of the community. Our approach is based on the quality of life model, focused in individual need, choices and autonomy. Our group modality promotes learning, not only from experts, but also from other children and families. This modality helps family feel belonging to a community and develop emotional and social skills from early stage of life. The multidisciplinary intervention with professionals from health, education, psychology and arts areas working together facilitate the development of the best potential of each participant. This model has a lower cost than individual model, is accessible and replicable, and the active involvement of families into the program facilitate their participation in research. The impact of our program improved development of and quality of life for each children with Down syndrome and their families. Also, we create a strong community who advocate for inclusion. In alliance with Arica Down Foundation from the north of Chile, we replicate the same program in their territory with our training and orientation, making adaptations for local needs. Now they are starting the second year of their own program. With our program, we could increase visibility and inclusion of individuals with Down syndrome. In this way, during March 2023, we sent a letter to our president requesting him to implement some specific public policies. This letter was supported by 72 other institutions that works with people with Down syndrome and more than 15,000 citizen signatures. Here is a video about our program. It is in Spanish, I'm sorry, but uh, subtitles in, Span in English. Okay, we have no voice again, but we can read. <laughs> Some of us. It's a pity, actually, yeah, that we cannot, but I know that the technical guys are doing their best, but they <laughs> couldn't manage.
described. Yeah, I know. But So the program is supported um, <clears throat> is supported by the contribution of our families and the center's own resources. For low-income families, we have annual scholarships supported by donors. Additionally, we apply for public grants and our university supports us too with physical space inside of uh, one of their campus, as you see in the video. Our next steps. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Our next steps are expand the program to other regions and apply the grants for grants to create new resources for families. We dream to implement a new sensorial gym, especially for children with Down syndrome and autism. We want to develop alliances with technology institutions to improve our in interventions, incorporating new techniques and measure their impact. Also, we hope to make more alliances with other institutions in Chile and Latin America to replicate this program as we do with Arica Down in the north of Chile. Thanks to all the families and the community who trust in our team, our projects and dreams, and thanks to Cerro Project to share our work in this opportunity. Thank you to you as well, Macarena. Among your challenges, I didn't see any funding challenges. So it seems you're just <laughs> focused on improving the model. I know that you have a religion uh, aspect in your uh, center too, right? So maybe the community is more helpful, helpful in this case. Uh, well, the, our university is a Catholic university, okay, but uh, we work with all of okay. the community yeah. uh, with or without some uh, so no funding budget. issues at least super uh -huh. congratulations thank you everyone i think we managed i know that we need to leave this stage in 15 minutes so now is the time for the audience uh, to tell us if they found anything interesting here so they can ask questions anybody yes please um, I'm sorry, but I think we need to take care of a microphone because the sign language interpreters will not be able then to. Hello, um, I am a uh, school based physical therapist from New York City. Um, I work for the Department of Education and I do have a question for the about the Down syndrome program. Um, I was just curious, is it hoping to be integrated into school or is it a separate program? Um, thank you. Uh, it is a separate program. It, compl it is complementary for uh, kindergarten and school uh, activities. So uh, we, we plan uh, the schedule of the children in the hour that they uh, aren't in the school. So for um, er, uh, children before three years, uh, they are they go to our center uh, in the morning, and for toddlers, they are go after lunch. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Egla. Egla is my colleague from Albania. Hi. Representing another organization. Yeah, we Albanians <laughs> are a team here every year. Uh, hi, my name is Eglantina Slaco and I represent Help the Life Association from Albania. We, we are a parent organization established 25 years ago, mainly focus our activity on service provision and empowerment of uh, parents. Uh, I have uh, one question for Miguel and one question for uh, the Israeli organization. I hope I'll have time <laughs> to, to make those questions. Uh, Miguel, uh, congratulations. Uh, I I know about your model because we are members of ESPD as well. 
Uh, we as well have a ECI center in Albania, and uh, we're trying to provide uh, early intervention programs for children with, dis uh, with disability, but mainly with autistic children. <laughs> uh, together with uh, Down syndrome Albania, we are currently working on um, designing the national model of ECI in Albania, which is a big, big challenge, and we know that we will. What uh, from what I have heard from you, that we are uh, going, we will go through many, many obstacles. Uh, I'd like to point out what you mentioned that uh, early uh, ECI uh, doesn't require waiting list. So it's <laughs> waiting list you, you cannot uh, mention. Uh, how did you manage to put on board uh, the ministries and uh, how uh, for how long or how uh, for how long did you uh, did you manage to put them together and concluding uh, for them that accepting and approving the uh, the model uh, and uh, replicated it all over the, the, the country because this is one of the biggest uh, challenges that we are facing, as Emanuela mentioned uh, at the beginning. Uh, and your experience may be not the whole one because we'll have the chance to talk later on and discuss about all the steps that you have followed, but just your some reflections. How did it went and was it very difficult and what was uh, those hints that you tried to, to make them together? And uh, the second question for the Israeli organization was that, uh, what? Yeah, sorry. Uh, you mentioned about the sensory disorders uh, for uh, the, the children that you are treating. We at our center, we have a sensory room that we try to uh, to, to work with the, 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 the kids that, that have uh, uh, sensory disorders in that room. Uh, how do you deal? What, what kind of... Uh, of uh, methodologies or uh, uh, what kind of uh, approaches do you use for those children? Because we all know that uh, children with autism, uh, they, they are linked to sensory disorders. Thank you and sorry, because maybe I went too far. <laughs> oh, I, uh, so I can start. Uh, okay. It is a really difficult process uh, for Portugal. Portugal has, a, I think, is as a specific characteristic on on Europe. It's a highly centralized decision uh, power control. So the the decision is by by the government. So when the government decided, it is to implement nationwide. So it was it was not a discussion. Should we do this? It was more like a discussion. We have to do this. How? So the discussion started from there. Uh, it's uh, my presentation is a little bit to say that it is possible for someone that has expertise in having early childhood intervention systems and, 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 and responses and, and, and teams, it's possible for us to share our knowledge to others. So you, 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 it's um, because I know there's, there's a lot of resistant forces to, to, to make things work together, you know, because I know teams are different. Health teams have this, stereotypical sometimes uh, notion of some rigidity. Education has this also. In, in between our teams, we know because parents know how to manage its, its response differently and they are experts in managing this information. So sometimes we, we feel uh, it happened to us. We feel that we are losing power, decision power, uh, to be autonomous in the decision process on, on planning the intervention. And, but I don't think there's a reason for it. Uh, I think it's a, it's a difficult process, but through some pilot projects, so we, we integrated the first wave of, of organizations that were entering this national system. And it's, it, it's tough, but through regular uh, meetings, so weekly meetings to, through the, the whole team, uh, Cross training between professionals inside the the team and having this this uh, really uh, uh, aspect of of getting the best of 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 each each team that was the process uh, on on waiting lists yes we had waiting lists health at waiting lists we all have waiting lists but. If we gather all the resources, because we were only five professionals at first managing one team, 
and now we are 20 professionals from different ministries. So it's easier for us to manage the resources to better accommodate for a specific need that now is arriving to our table. So if I have, a, if I, if I have, um, I'm, I'm, uh, I have, uh, I have, uh, I'm a case manager for one family that is a five-year-old that is now in a process that maybe my intervention can be more on the observe uh, on not very direct uh, support. Maybe I can redirect my 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 um, my time to one specific case that was born today, and this is urgent. And through twenty professionals, it's easier to find the, the resources. Well, it's not easy. My my professionals would would kill me if I say that it's easy, right? It's really difficult, and it's a lot of pressure. You we know ev everyone that's worked with children feels the pressure of, of anxiety by families, of urgent response, urgent needs. But through through this support, I think it's 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 feasible. It's feasible. Uh, we still have some issues, of course. We lack we lack resources. We wanted to have um, more family support, more uh, uh, a profession that we do not have is is a family assistant. It would be great if we had if we could train a family assistant that could have only five, ten families and they spend the day there. And we as professionals would train that family assistant to provide help. This is, I think, the next step. We do not have yet the national resources to do this, but it's it's possible, and I think it's replicable to to other countries to 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 implement it. Thank you, Miguel, and I'm sure you can continue the discussion afterwards. Uh, I will. Uh, yeah, Anita. Okay. So uh, in our programs, the early intervention uh, programs, uh, most of the children and the toddlers are um, uh, as have. Um, sensory processing disorder and uh, we put a lot of focus uh, in treatment to the sensory uh, part um, we have also sensory rooms and we have uh, all kind of programs that uh, um, assess assessing the the sensory profile and then uh, um, occupational therapist makes plans uh, to the kindergarten staff uh, of a sensory diet or a sensory integration. And uh, in the past years, uh, we understood that the interaction, the quality of interaction, can really um, uh, influence the, the, the sensory regulation. So we added this program of the MISCSR and we guide the parents and the staff, and uh, we see a beautiful uh, results. Because what we learned that um, that uh, the self-regulation is very, very uh, influencing of all uh, um, function, all functions. And when we work on the interaction with the, the caregiver, we see beautiful results that we didn't, uh, I can say, we didn't see before. We, we see it in, uh, in eating, in the eating, uh, in the meals, we see it uh, influence the language very nice uh, on the play, on the learning. We see a very nice uh, result, and that's why uh, we we decide to to take this program. And but uh, we also uh, for, we also do all the other things. I would like to add one sentence. Yeah, but please quick, because I want quick, to quick, give. Uh, I just want to add one sentence. You don't really need sensory rooms, equipped sensory rooms, when you understand the child's sensory profile. You can use the couch at home in the <laughs> living room. And this is very important. And once the parents understand it, they can do practicing. Yeah, with the child. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else have a question for Mandy or from the other colleagues are from Israel? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I wanted to ask a very brief question to the colleague from Portugal. I am Antonio Luis Martinez from uh, Miguel Hernandez. Do you hear me? Oh, we I have just Antonio four minutes. Okay. Martinez from the from Miguel Hernandez University in Elche, Spain, and I had a very brief question to a colleague from Portugal. 
is this national intervention system a purely public service or it is uh, done in collaboration with entities of the private sector or for example ngos and and so on yes uh, on yeah on so so the ministry of health yes provides professionals from their own team so public response also from education however from the social so from labor and social affairs we we are a private sector so we are a private ngo so um social affairs and labor do not have professionals available to allocate to these local eci teams that's why they pay us yes to provide on their behalf their uh, service so we provide our professionals to the to the team through the funding from the ministry of of welfare and labor yeah thank you um thank you is there any question for Mandy and uh, for the other colleagues? If not, I will ask them question. No? <laughs> OK, so um, Mandy, um, let's say that uh, who knows it happens that I can bring your program to Albania and you will be in another, um, let's say, cultural context. Can you please tell me how would you adapt? How would this be possible to adapt to another? cultural context. Thanks so much uh, for your questions. So um, it's cool because I've been experimenting and piloting in different countries and um, we test the program which is cultural transferable because they are all games and all children, no matter where you're from, what language you speak, you love to play games. So, so far we've been implemented in such a developed countries like Australia, United States, some part of Europe, uh, Hong Kong, but also in some remote setting like Thailand, Philippines, uh, Papua New Guinea, and we all found this available to suitable for their classroom settings and also for community settings. So, so far we find which is really good, but sometimes we may do a little bit adjustment for the uh, contextualized uh, program. So that's all. Thank you very much. Um, is there anything that you'd like to highlight? Maybe again in the context of adapting your program in another educational system or anything that you want the audience to take away for your practice? So first of all, I want to say that uh, I know that our program is being held now in Israel, but it's very easy to adapt to any community, to any culture, to any uh, to any school or kindergarten that needs to do it. Uh, we translate it into English, to Arab. We have uh, performed it into uh, multicultural uh, systems in Israel, and uh, it's very easy to, to do the changes. And we really hope that it will be in the mainstream education, like uh, all over. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I think we made it. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> um, I wish you all all the best. Thank you to the audience. My final request is anybody here feeling like a donor to programs in Albania for disability, please come and meet me. Thank you very much. <laughs>